as I said last year, try and guess our top 10. You won't, but try. And if you guess it, Sandy will give you a rim job. We'll give you some shit. Like, we'll, uh, we'll throw some merchandise your way. We'll, yeah. um, I'll touch your feet. We'll hook you up. I hate feet. We're Jungle Beats, and we're at the end of another year. This is our third list week. I know. It's our third list week, bro. 2016, 2017, here we are, third year of Jungle Beats. It's been some good years. Yeah, man. Come a long way. We're going to do our honorable mentions of 2018. What mm -hmm. this means, these are albums that did not make our top 10. Yep. But we think deserved a mention. Hundred. Hundred. And I don't know about you, but do you remember last time we did the honorable mentions? How like you're like I'm done. I'm like oh, shit. I got like another yeah, twenty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I kind of hope that you have the same as me this year. You, you got a lot. <laughs> yeah, I got a few. All right, let's do it. All right, Smino uh, Noir, dope album. Did a really different take on it. Uh, he switched up his vocal style, switched up a lot of the instrumental styles. Didn't get long enough to absorb it, but really fucking dope album. Deserved to mention. Hadn't heard it. Need to. This one, fucking just missed. Just missed. This I was saving them bitches to last. Oh, you think so? Right. Yeah, yeah. Saving them bitches no, no, to last. No, you know what? I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you one here okay. and then I'm going to save okay. some for later. Remember when I saved Jay-Z 444 for last? And oh, you were just like, you, you had to leave. You couldn't, you couldn't be in the room. Yeah. I'm going to give you one now then I'm going to give you some other later. Royce to 5'9". The Book of Ryan. The Book of Ryan. One of the best storytelling albums of the year. Exactly. And like I said, if they're with the same, then it doesn't matter because that's a mine as well. Exactly. Really dope storytelling. This just missed out. Um, I, I just think he did such a phenomenal job here on, as you said, storytelling. It was very powerful, introspective, self-reflective. Uh, and I think some could classify it as one of the best albums of the year as well. So I recognize that. Oh yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will put it in the top albums and I would completely agree with them. I, th I want to say one thing. When you start listening to this album, it's like a blank slate of marble. By the end of the album, Royce has carved this marble into a beautiful sculpture. Mm. That's what I have here. It's definitely his most vulnerable and open album, 100%. Got Inby the Girls for me. Uh, they're an Australian Ooh. artist. Cool. Really, really dope. Me and uh, me and Chris reviewed their music, and I really fucked with the sound, their style, everything was super dope and beautiful. And I really hope that the, they continue to make amazing music next year. So definitely deserve to mention. Mick Jenkins, Pieces of a Man. We're huge fans of Mick Jenkins over here. Massive fans. And I have a feeling that's in his 10. Uh, Mick dropped one of my favorite albums in 2016 in The Healing Component. And, it, it, you know, I really just didn't listen to it enough to feel it into the 10. I'm telling you right now, it got 11. Oh. It just missed out. I'll be, I listened to the album last night. I listened to parts of it on the way here. There's not a bad track on the album. But the other 10... Some of the other 10, the tracks on the album I don't like, but those albums I just have more nostalgic and better memories with. Like, like this album is amazing. And I reckon if I had a bit more time as well, it would easily be in the 10, but it just isn't right now. So that's... Royce was my 11, by the way. Mix my 11. Okay. All right, I got Vince Staples, uh, FM. That didn't even make it for me. As a, for as real? A, as an honorable, I, I didn't, yeah. See, I, I played it quite a lot. Uh, I think there was one or two tracks I still didn't listen to a lot, but I remember playing at work a lot, and on the, it was just a really vibey, upbeat, it just had, just put me in a good mood, you know? And it was good to hear Vince on that good shit, not back on that shit, big fish shit. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I could... I, I see. That's why I put it there. I think that has merit. Mm. Th this was tough, because this, this is a really, actually, really good album, probably one of his best. Uh, Anderson Park, Oxnard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, that's on mine as well. It just released too late for me for me to really be able to dive into it with the plethora of other music. Mm -hmm. um, but I think he did a really great job. And it's a great album. Completely agree. That's the same reason why it's in there as well. I would have put it probably a lot higher up, but the fact that I haven't grown with it, I've been revisiting so much other shit. Yeah. It didn't make it. Uh, I got Currency of Freddie Gribbs, Fetty, which we reviewed. Yeah. I really fuck with this short eight track album. Love the production all over this from The Alchemist. Incredible. They both trade really well. Freddie, especially on that one track where he goes hard as fuck. I uh, listened to it a lot, so I thought it deserved to mention. It's really dope. Brockhampton Iridescence. Dope. Some people say this is one of their best albums. Um, for me, it considering the context of all the other albums, it didn't hit me as much as the other ones. Um, a lot of people feel similar. Right. And so with that being said, I still appreciate the body of work, but I just haven't gone back to it to enjoy it that much. Yeah. Fair enough. Like I said, like huge amounts of fan base feel similar. And a lot of the newer fans really fuck with it heavily. Like I fucked with it really heavy. 
All right, we got our Student One's C Notes, which is his three track EP, and Drag, his seven track EP. He was my most listened to artist uh, after Mac Miller of this year. Brand new artist, uh, really dope. Okay. I recommend checking out those two EPs. He legit sounds like a new, different style of Childish Gambino. He even like puts Childish Gambino on his on his cow covers because he just wears that so strongly on his sleeve. Mm. And I can see big things happening from next year. Okay. Super dope. Travis Scott, Astro World. Yeah, it's a mine as well. It's there pretty high up. Uh, this nearly didn't make the honorable mentions, but for real, it because I had to remind myself. Fantona made me remind me. Oh wait, Astro World was actually. It was a dope album. A pretty good album. There wasn't a bad track to me production-wise on there because I remember the end of it, I'm like, this production for this album is one of the best of the year. And I still strongly believe that. It's just more some of the features and the vocal tones which didn't really make it very outstanding or memorable as much. But it also had some of the biggest tracks of this year. I think oh. Travis is good at that. I he think Sicko Mode is one of the best tracks of the he year. He did it with Sicko Mode and he did it with Antidote. Mm -hmm. And I think he's really good at that. 100%, man. Completely agree. Uh, I've got... John Bellion's Glory Sound Prep. Uh, I don't listen to a lot of pop music, but like as in straight pop, but John Bellion's style of pop, I really fuck with. He uses a lot of different sounds and the production that he just goes for is just, just different to any other pop out there. And he, he meshes a lot of different genre sounds in there as well. And I really think he crafted one of his best albums in this. And uh, it, was my, it was my sleeping album. It was my third most listened to album of the year. But not because I was like really listening and paying attention. I just really liked sleeping and just thinking with it on. So Sleeping album. That yeah. could be a list right there. It is legit, legit. It was my main sleeping album of the year and I really fucked with it heavy. Kamasi Washington, Heaven and Earth. I didn't get through it, I'm sorry. You hadn't listened to it once? <laughs> no, I got through like the first hour. Oh. And then I just so you forgot, haven't listened to it? I forgot to go back to it. That's hey. hilarious. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, Kamasi Washington is one of the most profound uh, jazz Musicians of our day and age. Musicians, right? Um, I'm sorry, man. He dropped a three-disc album that's two to three hours in length. Yeah. Kind of similar to his last album, which was pretty pretty big. I mean, exactly. Uh, I listened to it probably two to three times, maybe in total, giving maybe something like that. Um, and I just think it's gorgeous. Uh, I, I think he's a phenomenal musician, and I can't even speak on it that intelligently to like what he's doing because <laughs> I don't like. That's me with every album. <laughs> <laughs> I just like. I recognize this, this amount of talent. Yeah. Put it here. Yeah, I'm sorry. We were going to review it, but... Yeah, Come on, bro. It's, it's pretty long. Oh, my God. Georgia Smith, Lost and Found. Okay. Uh, an album it. that... It took a while to grow on me. I remember from first listen, I was like... I didn't fuck with everything in general, but the more I listened to it, the more I kind of got the story of kind of like young love and going through all those sort of feelings. And I kind of resonated with a lot of that because I had very similar feelings at that age. So nice. I think if I was younger, I'd resonate with it more, but... I really fuck with a lot of her sound and I think it deserves a mention because she did it really beautifully. Okay. Good job. It is interesting because I'm five years younger than you and I, I do resonate. With, I think that's a great point. I do mm. resonate with it quite heavily. You said Freddie Gibbs Freddy. Uh, speaking of... I didn't say Freddie Gibbs Freddy. I, you said, didn't? I said Fetty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, but I'm going to say Freddie Gibbs Freddy. That's funny because I got Freddie Gibbs Freddy on here as well. There we go. Fuck man. Uh, probably the best album of the year in terms of having trap bangers. Because I'm not huge on trap, but I can't think of an album that has think, better trap bangers than Freddie I, I think that's got some merit. Um, that's, a, that's a good point. Freddie does, he, he continues to show us why he, he, he's one of the, he's a trap king. One of the kings of the underground. He is so versatile. Right. He's the Danny Brown of, not Danny Brown. Yeah, nice. Good one. <laughs> uh, Set Set's one of the, my favorite bangers of the year, for sure. It's fucking crazy. We got Flatwood Zombies, Vacation in Hell. So uh, started up really high. Listened to it a lot, but for some reason, around mid-year, I just stopped listening to it. I just didn't go back to it. And when I did go back to it, it was the tracks. And I was like, these tracks just don't resonate with me as much. So sadly, I did fuck with this album a lot, but uh, I still think it deserves a mention because of how much I did play it. But yeah. And I don't think, for me, it, it doesn't have that replayability where I could go back and listen to it as an album. I just think it was too long. Yeah. And I think some it. of the tracks were just not filler, but just didn't hit me as much. Fair enough. Uh, now, this is an album I haven't listened to in a while, but Kali Uchi's Isolation. Uh, similar to, to Jorah Smith, mm -hmm. except in, in a lot of ways, sonically, um, I did, really did enjoy this, this project from a sonic perspective, but I, I just didn't dive into it conceptually or like um, theme-wise. Mm. I think it's a grower as well, that album. Yeah, so I, I went back to it a few times and I felt a bit better about it because my initial reaction wasn't too strong. Right, so respect to Kali. I, I look forward to your next 
music. I've got a Drake Scorpion side B. I thought side Can we A. do that side B, side A shit? Can we do that? I think so, man. Because they are. he did want them technically to be two different albums. I still think Drake, you're releasing those double albums. Don't do that again, man. No Just bueno. Don't, don't do it, man. But I still think Drake had an incredible year. God's Plan. Yep. Uh, As a Kiki, kid. do you love me? Do it. Uh, in the, in my feelings, he had a big year, man. He had some of the biggest singles of the year, and even though Scorpion was really long, a lot of people in terms of the hip hop world didn't fuck with it. It still sold really well. It still did really well. Very very new friendly. Yeah, and I thought Side B was really beautifully done. I've gone back to it a bit, not a lot, but enough that I thought that hey, he put in the work. He didn't really go to Adventurous, but he still put out some good music. I didn't go back to it because it's so long and I don't even know where to start with it. Yeah. But I think if we're looking like that, I'm going to put side B in it too. Mm-hmm. Logic, Bobby Tarantino 2. Now, I know a lot of Logic fans and stands may not fuck with this, but I like the boom back confident flow. There are highlights for me that I go back to. And that is all. No Young Sinatra 4? I need to even go to Spotify just to fucking remind was, myself. Because Bobby Tarantino 2 was his mixtape, which was kind of more poppy-ish. It still hasn't been back. I think Young Sinatra 4 was the more boom-back one. We can cut all this out if we were <laughs> No, no, no. It's fine. Just continue. Continue? All right. While you're looking it up, I'm going to say uh, Death Grips Year of the Snitch. I went back to it a bit. Uh-huh. Okay. I went back to it a bit, and I... Like, I think our reaction was pretty strong. Like, we didn't really understand a lot of it, but we fucked with a lot of what they were trying, and... A lot of these fucking sounds and shit that they go for is really well crafted. And yeah, definitely deserves a mention. There you go, Death Grips fans. Hold on one sec. Let me just... Because this released while I was in America the first time. Young Sinatra 4. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I was going to say, Young Sinatra 4 made my honorable mentions, but Bobby Tarantino 2 did not. Oh, that can get fucked. That can get fucked. When that made it, I was like, are you serious, man? Back to your boom bap release, leaving that shit in there. That's a tune. You, you know what? I, I scratch what I'm saying. I would definitely replace Bobby Tarantino 2 with the Young, Young Sinatra. Sinatra. 100%. I think it definitely has more boom bap. What the fuck am I? What, Young what Sinatra was 4 was uh, really dope. And honestly, the reason it wasn't higher is because I'm just not as involved with Logic as I used to be. Because I feel like him as a person growing is growing in a direction which I don't resonate with as much. But still make some real dope music. Is it my turn? Yeah, boy. This one released early in the year. Sir, November. You remember this? I do remember that. This was actually my top 10 within the first four or five months of the year. Mm -hmm. I think this is a beautiful album. Soulful, melodic, pretty, Mm. sleepy. The production is a standout to me. It starts and finishes strong, but you remember that middle part? Yeah, that's what held it. That that, that, track called I Know is is the oddball. Um, But it's still good enough to... And I still love that track with School Q so much. That piano, he's like, it's such a great song, man. There's some really good tracks on that album. Man, that, that man has the potential to make a fucking classic, I reckon. When done right, we got uh, Khan and Dem Joints, Pure Intentions. Khan's a new artist I've been checking out this year, K-A-A-N. Uh, really versatile, uh, really dope, can sing, can rap, uh, gets a lot of dope features on there. I can see him blowing up in the underground probably the next few years. Really fucking talented. Fucked with the album a lot. Thank you for people in the comments that kept telling me to check him out. I did, and he's dope. All right, calm. Uh, Alina Berez, The Color of You. Mm-hmm. Have you heard of this artist? No. She's a smaller kind of pop R&B artist. Uh, I just wanted to put it out there if you're interested in that genre. I think she did an, a good job on the level of, or well, towards the level of a Jorah Smith or, or a Kali Uchis. Um, very refreshing, sensual, and pretty. Mm. A kind of a, a vibrant take on pop. I've got a, uh, fuck, I don't even know how to pronounce this. Toby, Toby Nig. Oh, yeah. Nwigwi. Did oh, I send you that I album? I forgot about my dude there. Mm-hmm. That's very good, yes. Uh, it's called The Originals. Uh, I honestly checked it out because I fucked with the album cover. I right. saw the cover and I was like, this is dope, let me check it out. Holy shit. I'm pretty sure, I'm, not, I'm pretty sure it's from the UK. I could be 100% wrong, but he just blends a style of sort of pop with a lot of bass with hip hop. And it works so fucking well. Like, the whole album has this production theme the whole way start to finish. And even, and it just holds, like, fucking merit, man. He can flow. He has amazing hooks. And it's just it's just a really feel-good album. And um, start to finish, I played it back for a good month straight, I think. So, definitely deserved to mention. There's a lot of bangers on there, too. It's, bro, it's a really good album. Like, it's just the bass on the album the whole way through. It just, it just fucking, it just holds you, bro. For if we did, like, an unknown artist 
album list, like that for me would be in a top 10. Yeah, yeah 100%, um, bro. There you go. I'm glad you checked it out. I send, that, I send the album to a lot of people. Whenever I found an album I really fuck with, I just send it to everyone. So I think exposure is a huge thing. Mick Jenkins, again. Or more the frustration. Or more the anxious and the frustration. Anxious last year. Or more the frustration. <laughs> uh, yeah, I've got it here as well. My bad. Uh, I put it up there with Pieces of a Man. I honestly think they're very similar in a ways in terms of production. But you still want to give it respect because it oh, is, a, is a good project. It was. There wasn't a bad track on that either. Yeah, he hasn't slipped. Like legit, Mick Jenkins is probably entering my top 10 favorite artists because he has not released a bad album yep. and we love, every, we, we do everything that motherfucker does. Yep. He's talented as fuck. Absolutely. Well said. Bruh. Uh, I've got Naz with Nazir. Hmm. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> this second. boy's checking if he's in the 10. Wait a second. <laughs> Did wait I put second. Naz in the 10? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. It was, I was, it, for the majority of the year or until it came out, it was in the 10. Yep. It was in my 10 for a bit as well. And the reason it's here is because I think there was one or two tracks on here. It's not in was there. It? No, no, there was one. There was one track I think that I didn't fuck with a lot, and the other six I really played a lot. Very similar to Daytona. I think it's the last track you didn't play. The yeah, outro. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the one. I think that's that's the only track yeah. that I didn't fuck with. And I'm the same. Very similar to to the keys. Is it keys? Black keys? White keys? On that the one with Rick Ross on Daytona? Don't know. Either way. Because it's a seven track album, I believe you need to have all seven tracks to be fucking great for it to be on a top 10 list. Because if you, if you slip it up on one, like the less tracks you have, the less the- But it's a really, I've actually oh. missed, my notes are gone on it. But um, I don't know where they're going. Like bro, everything, to me still one of the best tracks of the year. I said it when it happened and I still believe that now. Holy shit, The Dream and Kanye West and Naz put on an absolute amazing performance in that bitch. I, I think production wise, it's incredibly cohesive and he did a really great job. This, Adam this is- if we did a top 20 Harmony. list, this could be in a in that. Yeah, 100%. Really dope. Don't fall too far. Raven Lene, your girl. The Crush EP. Got that as well. It's fun. It's sweet. Oh. It's pleasant. Yeah, Steve Lacey really helps along with this album as well, crafting a slightly different sound to her Moon Shoes EP. Uh, Sticky was amazing. The Night Song. Like, it's just a really feel-good album. And I really see her doing better things next year. I'm seeing her live next year. That's you want to come? Dope. Tickets still on sale. I didn't even know that. Playing a howler, uh, really fuck with her. She my girl. I fuck with her. She's good. She's dope. So we got a lot bit more pop R and B artists in this in these lists. Uh, more I've, than ever. I've grown a lot more in pop this year because yeah. normally people look at me when they the reviews like this guy hates pop. Whenever he hears a pop sound, he hates it. It's uh, true. Have you seen our Kendrick Lamar damn review? <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. I wanna be with you. That was so hard to get through. <laughs> I mean, I always applaud artists for going for different things, but it's just another aspect of life, man. Love, yeah. Yeah, love. What, creating shit music? <laughs> I can't listen to the Messages track because I just find that this track is like the biggest piece of trash he's ever fucking created. Um, I got Rose Hearts with Songs in the Key of Solitude. And I said, once again, I found because I like the album cover. It's just a random thing I do. I just click on things like they cover dope. And it's a very vulnerable album. There's like skits all throughout the album of him being intoxicated or screaming at the top of his lungs or having these inner demons, but then it goes straight to these songs which are soulful and he's just putting on this face, this mask of a different character. And he, he's, he's a, he sings and he sings so beautifully with this kind of electric poppy style production. But then in between all these beautiful tracks, he's just super vulnerable. It's, it's a really fucking incredible album. Sounds like I've got to hear that joint. Yeah, yeah. Really check out Rose Hearts. Uh, really dope artist. And like I said, legit, if you find a cover that you think looks dope, check it out. Because so far I've got two really good albums <laughs> from it. Uh, Eden. Vertigo, this is, thanks to you guys, a couple of you recommended it on the likes of James Blake because they knew uh, we and I really like James Blake. And uh, I listened mm -hmm. to it and I think the production is, is phenomenal. Yeah, uh, yeah. I haven't really dived into it, but it, it kind of nearly made my 10 at some points, but I just couldn't really digest it um, properly, but I wanted to give it respect. Fuck yeah. Uh, I've got uh, Fonte, No News is Good News. Uh, really dope album. Uh, the single The Light caught me and then a lot of people were telling me you gotta check out this album from Fonte, you gotta check this album from Fonte. Cause he's from, he's one of the halves from uh, Little Brother. And really dope. He actually blends a lot of different pop styles throughout this album, but he still keeps that really old school sound and he's just evolving as an artist. And I think it deserves props cause he did a really good job with this one. Sylvan LeCue. Apologies in advance. No? Blow it a man. Thank you. I was scared for a second there because Florida Man's in mine as well. Florida Man, the mixtape. Florida Man, Florida Man, Florida Man. Florida Man, Florida Man, Florida Man. 
Flood of man, flood of man, flood of man. Sorry. The best. What, if it's if we did best mixtapes, it'd probably yeah. be the best mixtape of the year. Best mixtape of the year. Um, Not many people rap over all instrumentals these days, but this man did, and he crushed everything. And he did a music video Holy accompanying shit. with every single one. It was just such a cool. Bro. Fucking album. And the settings, oh, and do not question. Bruh. I wish I was on Spotify. Y'all already know. That shit is hard as fuck. It's a hard as fuck album. Oh. He's a hard as fuck type of artist. He is amazing. Check the album the queue out. Probably won't be the last time we mention him. All right. I got uh, Black Milk's Fever. Uh, Black Milk is a rapper producer, mostly producer in my opinion. And he put out a new album this year that was really... A bit out of his comfort zone, I thought. Fucking with a lot of different sounds. And I went back to it a fair few times. I thought I deserved to mention. He's a dope artist. And if you ever get a chance to see him live, do so. He kills it. Frank Casino. Your man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something from me. I Hell. really like this album. I thought it was honest and ambitious and challenging and inventive. And diverse. And his, his lyrical prowess. It, it showed how much lyrical prowess he had. And uh, I think mm. he's a dope... Unknown artists coming up. 100%. Pretty sure it's in France too. French been killing it, bro. I got uh, ASAP Rocky testing. Mm, I know. Have that. See, I know a lot of people didn't fuck with it. I think at first, when I first reviewed it, I said the production start to finish. Similar to Astro World, the start to finish production, there was no flaws. It was so perfectly done. But once again, the way he used his vocals, some of the features didn't work as well. But over time, I fucked with it a lot more. I fucked a bit more. And now I probably like 80 to 90% of the album. And I honestly think it's paying off for him. I think it's a really smart album. I truly believe his next line of work is going to improve on that sound and make an incredible album. Also, he has some of the fucking best videos, man. Fucking. Yeah, those being good, man. Oh, the the fucking last one. Gang. Oh, Tony Tone? Tony Tone. Tony Tone. That's man. pretty dope. Man, you had a really good year, Ace of Rocky. Great fucking job. Your growth is something I unexpected and I fuck with it. Denzel Curry. Taboo. Whoa. Some would call this one of the most groundbreaking experimental projects of the year. Some would call this extremely diverse and cohesive. Where'd this go? Was this like 12 or 13 for you? This was around 18, actually. Wow. Yeah. I thought you fucked with this heavy. I did, but I, I, I didn't fuck with it heavy enough. I didn't go back to it enough to warrant the top 10. You want to know something? Yeah, it's in your 10. You got 12. Oh, ho. Denzel Curry. I was saving it for last. Damn, son. Denzel Curry got 12. The reason it didn't make my 10 is the same thing. I didn't go back to as much as the other albums. We can't force it. When I listen to start to finish, I'm like, there's one track I don't like. It's the one that goes, oh, oh. Fuck that song, Denzel. But uh, the rest of the album, it's so fucking beautifully crafted. He's evolved so much as an artist from Imperial. But yeah, just didn't go back to it as much. It's, it's crazy, man. See, I enjoyed an album like Young Father's Coco Sugar. Bruh. Honorable mention number 13. Bruh. Um, that was so... It was a feel album. Right. A extremely just like hit you in your fucking soul. Mm. Um, in my view. Incredible. Dun -dun 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 -dun. Thank you very much, Noah, for hitting us up with that one. Really glad we checked that out. Really Absolutely. glad. Absolutely. Big thank you to you. I just wanted to mention that. If you haven't heard of them, give them a listen. Even if... Uh, Hip hop and rap is your yeah. only genre you like. Mm -hmm. I got a uh, Reggie Snow's Dear Annie. Uh, saw him live this year, killed it. Had probably three, four of the my top listen tracks in this year on really? Spotify. No wonder. Things like Twenty Three, Egyptian Lover, uh, Egyptian Amora. Lover's dope. What's that? Egyptian Lover's dope. It's dope. Legit. He is an amazing artist. And the only reason this isn't high up is because there was a bit of filler on this album. Like a lot of this Long. album. A lot of this album, I was just like, this is dope, this is dope, this is dope. This could be a top 10, this could be a top 5, but then there'd be the filler, the filler, and I'm like, mmm. But honestly, deserve to mention, he's an amazing artist. The Weeknd. My, My dear Melancholy. I thought this would be in 10. Look. Is the reason because it was too short? Because it's not no, about... No, it wasn't to do with the length. Fuck, it was in the 10 for a while, and then it bumped it out when I really did my 10, because there's, mm. I just came back to other albums a lot more. Can we agree that Call Out My Name is one of the best tracks of the year? We can agree that Call Out My Name is phenomenal. That is amazing. And this is a very vulnerable, uh, heartfelt album, and it's yep. kind of a hybrid mix between the old and the new, mm -hmm. but it wasn't creative and refreshing enough for me to warrant putting it in the 10. I got uh, John Gray and Quelle Chris with uh, Everything's Fine. Uh, really bizarre and weird album, this type of shit I like. And if you remember, I put Quelle Chris's, I don't, 
the I don't like being me. I wish I could be you more often in the year before. Mm. Uh, repeat. I, what? Here he, is, here he is again. Here he is again. It was in the 10 until about two months ago. It was in the 10 the whole year. It happens. But it got to the end. I've gone back to this album a lot. I fuck with it overall. Just everything about it is my personality. It's so weird. It's so fucking crazy. I fucking love it. And it just didn't make it because I just like the other albums better. Where should I go next? Let's go to yeah, Eminem. I was, I was 13. Kamikaze. Yeah. It's in mine too. Number 12. Actually, it's my number 15. There you go. It's a similar-ish ranking. He really came back strong with this one. We, you guys oh. know our thoughts on this. Yeah, legit. After, look, I, I, I did not think we'd get an album like this from Eminem ever again in my lifetime. After hearing Revival and a lot of shit before that, it was such a breath of fresh air. Having so much bad shit happen to him, having him check out all the reviews and everything has made Eminem evolve once again. And it's so refreshing and fun to just hear him spitting like this and ev almost every track offers mm. us oh, hard-hitting yeah. bangers with just lyrical uh fucking just in your face and even on join us track on his album yeah and even on um fuck, there's another track that he did as well and even the the freestyle with um mgk he's had a good year he's had a good comeback year yeah he's had a good comeback year and i really think he definitely deserved that it's just so good to hear eminem back in the game not be a fucking joke. <laughs> uh, I've got L Sweatshirt, some rap songs. Okay. Fair enough. I know that you weren't huge on this, but I went back to this album a lot. And I think that uh, I resonate with it heavy. It's super depressing. It's to deal with loss. It's to deal with uh, anxiety. Uh, it's just a real dark album. I think production-wise, it might take a lot for the like, but just listening to it lyrically and the way he just goes about this album... You just when you once you get absorbed into it, it takes a hold of you, man. I, I looked at all the comments. I went back to it and listened to. You got to listen to it in full. We fucked up. We should have listened to it in full, yeah. in my opinion. Um, the, I, I see how why this is highly claimed. I mm -hmm. see. I see as well. Pitchfork put in their top ten. No shit. Yeah, definitely deserves it. Once again, more time might have been in ten. And this this stayed in my ten for a while. Uh, J Cole KOD. Mm -hmm. I think he reinvented himself. Uh, by tapping in to this mainstream trap sound and actually kind of doing it better than the majority of other people. Mm. He took elements of today's trap and, and, and blended it with his own kind of take on it. Uh, and I... It's very solid. This is what you call a flip. Thank you for a call a break. Bed late from your mama whip. KLD he. Hard as shit. Hey. One of the hardest tracks of the year. I uh, got... J.I.D. DiCaprio 2. Damn, son. What was that? That was 14. Yeah, I say 14. Just release it a bit early. You might change that. Uh, I've listened to it non-stop since it came out. And it's still 14. It's still 14. Damn. Non-stop. Back and forth. But the thing about it, though, is there's a few tracks on there I still don't fuck with. Oh, fair enough. So pretty much the same as my initial reaction. But, bruh. Of the Zoinkies. Of these. Westbrook. Bruh. Come on, son. Bruh. Like, legit. It's an incredible album. And as we keep saying with all these albums, if it were released earlier, mid-year, I would... So what everyone needs to do is release their older albums in the first six months. Legit. Don't it. release your albums late in the year because you won't make anyone's ten, y'all. It's actually a marketing <laughs> move that people should really consider. Definitely, man. JRD, incredible work. And I'm going to be trying to get a ticket to see you once you come down here. Try. Go get it, man. I'm going to get 60 it. Bucks. 60 bucks. Wait, I thought it was more. 60 bucks. I got to see, bro. Get a ticket, man. Come with. Fuck we'll man. be there. I'll be it's there. Crazy. He'll be there. Crazy. Uh, the second last one for me is Mac Miller's Swimming. Okay. I understand people might be mad at this. I understand this. Why would this. be mad? It's your fucking 10. Because it's fucking YouTube, bro. People get mad. Have you seen the comments? You've seen the comments. The, what, the what I love about every most videos, like with Tabby's videos, with his 10, Tabby goes, just, you know, this is my opinion. Fuck you. Fuck your opinion. This is my opinion. This is my time. When you realize, oh, why don't you have this in there? Because it's not you. It's me. So like, yeah. it's hilarious. Shout out, Tabby. We're going to review his album, by the way. I recognize it's daring, powerful, and vulnerable, and beautiful. But it, it, it just doesn't hit me as, as some as the others did. And the replay value isn't as high. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. I respect that, bro. Fuck, man. I think you're going to beat me. How many you got left? One. I got one as well. The fuck? Wow. Bruh. Last year I had like, I think, I think it's just been such a good year. You, you, you had like 
I, 15 more than me last year. Well, I cut out about 15 because I thought I had way too much, which yeah. I definitely well, did. Well, we're pushing it, really. All right. Uh, my last one I've got, which I think is good to save here, is Pusha T's Daytona. Oh, he's mad. This is, the, this is the exact same as last year. And the only reason it didn't make the 10 is because that track with Rick Ross. Because of one track? Yep. Like, a, dude, dude, if you're making a seven-track uh, album, if yeah, you're making a seven-track album, flawless. come with a flawless. And I know it's flawless to many others, and I know for a fact that this is going to be the number one for many fucking channels and many friends of mine. Fair uh, enough, man. If that's your rule, that's your rule. I can't argue that. Everything besides that, amazing. Yeah. Like, all tracks, 9 to 10 out of 10. Yeah. But that track with Rick Ross, mastering is off, Rick Ross is off. Every, I just can't fuck with it. I just don't get it. I don't fuck with it. Fair enough. That's why Daytona didn't make it. Last one for me. Kanye West. Yee. Didn't even make mine. Ah, fair enough. This was actually 19 for me. This was barely a top 20 album. It's worth mentioning though, because a lot of the singles on that, a lot of the singular tracks in the album are really good. Yeah, and it does cover important themes of, of mental illness and politics and free yeah. thought and how the black community... Um, I don't know what the hell I was going to finish that sentence. <laughs> uh, I think it was quite raw and vulnerable. Um, and some would say it's, it's one of his most revealing projects yet. I don't mm -hmm. know about that, but I, I want to just recognize it. it is, it's, it's, it's funness. It's fun. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're done. And that's our honorable mentions. So, as I said last year, try and guess our top 10. You won't, but try. And if you guess it, Sandy will give you a rim job. We'll give you some shit. Like we'll, we'll throw some merchandise your way. We'll yeah. um. I'll touch your feet. We'll hook you up. I hate feet. I'll give you a centipede. We'll name him Larry, and he'll be Larry. How are you gonna ship a centipede overseas, bro? <laughs> oh man, with a ship. <laughs> uh, this is list week for 2018. If you uh, mm -hmm. be sure to check out all the other all the other lists we're doing. We're gonna do a lot. If you're watching this late, it'll be all up in here. 100. percent on the channel. We're going crazy this year. We're making it big. With Jungle Beats. Thank you very much. All right, put your honorable mentions too, bro. 100%. So that way, if we, we if we don't know what it is, we can check it out. All right, okay, we're done then. We're done. <laughs>